Sooner or later, this is going to happen. If you want your exponential growth, guys are going to get busted. Simple as that. So how about we get him a real attorney? I mean, what the hell is this? This is who he hires? What? Are you kidding me? This is the guy you want. This is the guy I'd hire. Oh, it's the guy you'd hire. Uh, look, you remember Emilio? Okay, this dude got Emilio off like tw twice. Okay, both times they had him dead to rights, yo. And then, then poof. Dude's like Houdini. Seriously, when the going gets tough, you don't want a criminal lawyer. All right, you want a criminal lawyer. Know what I'm saying? The phones that were seized, is there... We gotta go, we're gonna have to go file a writ. We gotta do something. But you know, it, it, this is all tactics. You know, they don't want us to defend them. When's the last time you had an attorney's investigator, a person working with an attorney, phone subpoenaed? Chris? We, we have our phones back, guys. Huh? But oh, they gave them get, back because they knew back? they had to. So was there something on there that was privileged that they shouldn't have had access to? Likely, yes. So any communication between us is privileged? Yes, likely. And based on my, on my background as a civil rights attorney, uh, I can assure you that the seizing of the phone contained communication that's protected by the attorney-client privilege between me and Mr. Fletcher. Mr. Fletcher, yes. how scary was that when that What's good, y'all? It's Coffee back with another one. And you guys heard Jesse Pinkman there. He said, Mr. White, when the going gets tough, you don't want a criminal attorney. You want a criminal attorney. Damn, Mr. White, I got to school you up on everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then he grew to be Heisenberg, one of the most cold, calculated gangsters Albuquerque had ever seen. You feel me? But that's beside the point here, man. You seen that attorney who we're talking about, Matthew Fletcher. We're also going to talk a little bit about another attorney, Thaddeus Culpepper. But uh, we're mainly talking about Mark Fletcher, who you saw talking to the press. And when they asked him, you know, those phones that that phone that was seized with you talking to Suge, what kind of information was on there? And he was like, um, yeah, we're not really going to talk about that. You know what I mean? That was a super awkward moment and to keep it real man when suge knight first got bagged up on this uh murder charge that he later copped out to man or voluntary manslaughter 28 years i honestly really thought he had a shot at beating this case just from a legal standpoint you know what i'm saying i'm not no legal analyst but i was like yo he was fleeing the scene you had the other individual bone um letting it be known and putting it out there yo I beat the brakes off Suge. And I was really wondering, like, could Bone putting it out there that he was the aggressor? Could they say Suge was rightfully fleeing the scene and almost put that on Bone? But we know the way it all played out. Suge copped out, got 28 years. And, I mean, they, that may have very well happened anyways. You know what I'm saying? They've long wanted Suge Knight locked away. And he spent a lot of his life locked away, um, you know, even like a after being famous and getting to the bag, he went to prison quite a few times. But the fact if he could beat it or not, that's all besides the point from all this ish that the attorneys got caught up in that individual, Matthew Fletcher, that we're talking about. He just went through trial and they're about to begin deliberating. And um, get in the comments, guys. Let me know if you think he's going to be convicted or not. You see all these clips with Better Call Saul. That's what the prosecutors refer to him as. They're like, this guy is the real life Saul Goodman. Um, they, they've said, you know, in, in the past, he's stated that he's a gang attorney, a mother fucking gang attorney. And if you guys remember back when all this case was originally going on, there was like footage of him swearing in the courtroom when should passed out and all that and jump in the comments guys let me know do you think that was all a hustle that they were trying to play to see you know to basically say yo he's not getting the proper medical treatment and you know maybe get the bail reduced or file some motions and get him up out of jail out of custody while the case was pending or do you guys think suge knight legitimately you know uh fell out and all that because let's be honest people do get mistreated in correctional facilities it's been known to happen from time to time, to say the least. 
But, um, you know, we all know about Suge's case, but all this drama with the attorneys has kind of been pushed to the side. People ain't really aware of this. And like I said, he just stood trial where he defended himself. I think he had his own attorney a little bit, this individual, Matthew Fletcher. Like I said, prosecutors hate this guy. There were allegations in the past, even prior to this case, that an informant offered him meth to, like, pay for legal defense. And uh, he actually stated to the informant, man, I've sold way more drugs than that in my lifetime. But then later told the authorities, man, I was kidding around. I knew he was an informant. And getting into all this information in this case, the fact that he took it to trial, it, it's kind of almost similar to his response in that situation. Now, real quick, before we go ahead, breaking down his whole situation, um, the other attorney, Thad Culpepper, he's charged in this whole bribing witnesses scandal as well. But his case is on hold because he's got a whole bunch of other Fed cases and whatnot. He's accused of cashing over a million dollars in stolen checks. But, you know, he's charged with bribing the witnesses as well. And there's another individual named Mark Blankenship, who was just like a business associate of Suge Knight. And he helped sell the tape of the fatal hit and run to TMZ. He got charged for that. I believe he ended up getting probation. And I think Suge Knight's wife or fiance, baby's mom, we know he's had a, a lot of different uh, women throughout the years. She got hit with some charges as well. I think she might have ended up getting probation or something like that. But anyways, getting back to talking about this guy, Matthew Fletcher, the real life better call Saul. You heard him talking about phone conversations being privileged and the phone being seized. Well, in the end, that's what really ended up getting the ball rolling on charging and indicting these attorneys and kind of flucking up Suge's hold. Like after this went down, Suge had no shot in the world at beating this. You know, your attorneys are out here on running around on some corrupt gangster shit, uh, allegedly. Well, I don't know. But anyways, man, this happened six months before... Um, Suge took that plea, you know what I mean? After that happened, he got a new attorney and pretty much just copped out. He he, he had no fight left in him, and he really, there was just no way with that kind of ish floating in the air and the attorneys being removed off the case. But um, uh, another, um, there's other allegations against these attorneys too, perjury and other stuff. But basically, they say that they were trying to pay witnesses to come forward and say that they saw individuals with guns, you know what I'm saying, offering to pay them. Um, at, at one point in time, I want to say there was even a price put out there for $25,000. They, they have some recorded audio of this attorney saying twenty five k is a fair price for freedom. You know, and I told Suge, you can always make more money, but you can't make more freedom. So we got to basically buy it now. Now, he's trying to argue this, like I was saying before about the meth thing with this situation. He's trying to say, no, 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 we did offer to pay witnesses, but we offered to pay him to bring forth videos. There was reportedly people out there with real videos of the incident, other angles of footage that you guys didn't see before. And that's basically more or less uh, his argument, you know, and they got a lot of recorded phone convos and they try to file motions in the beginning just to get all this thrown out because like I said or as you heard him say attorney client it's all supposed to be privileged convos and um, you know in this situation they were able to kind of break that rule because they had a uh, reason to believe that there was some corruption going on but peep this, the attorney just didn't fluck all the way up. It was Suge as well because they had an undercover informant in there that hollered at Suge and was like, yo, I got some people that are willing to help you. Suge sent him to the attorney and uh, more or less the rest is history. Listen, this is a quote from some of the recorded info. If these mother fluckers got a price, well, let's get that mother fucking price paid. Um, I told Suge, man, you can always make some more money. You can't make any more freedom, though. So, so I already kind of touched on that. Um, and he, he also also stated 25000 would be a fair investment to secure an acquittal. And they also have him saying that 
Like, hey, if there's someone, and I'm paraphrasing here, hey, if there's someone out there that we can, you know, get that right price out to them and they can step in and say what we need them to say and get this thing, you know, thrown out an innocent verdict. And then down the road, they step forward and say, oh, I got paid 50 bands or something like that. We'll just say, motherfucker, prove it because it's all done with. But aside from this situation, um, the prosecutors really do not like this guy. Like I said, they like they call him Saul. They said he's just corrupt as fuck. He's been at it for a long time. You know what I mean? But the attorney and uh, other cats involved are basically trying to say, oh, this was all a witch hunt. You know what I'm saying? They've been out to put Suge Knight away, which I do believe they wanted Suge Knight behind bars. You know what I mean? Um, but you know what's kind of crazy? If you think back about the infamous, you know, incident in the Luxor Hotel after the Tyson's fight, or I believe that was at the Luxor. Jump in the comments if I'm wrong about that. But, you know, we all saw the footage where they were putting the beats to Orlando. And... Um, what do they call him? Baby Lane or whatever. You know, later down the road, there was a similar situation where he ended up getting a little payment and then later getting on the stand and saying, yo, uh, he was helping me up. Suge Knight was helping me up, but I don't think it worked anyways. He caught that violation. But what do y'all think, guys? Get in the comments. Like I said, jury is due to begin deliberating soon. Do you think he's going to go down? Um, and what do you guys think about the case in general prior to all this with the attorneys getting in? Do you guys think that they didn't need to try to bribe witnesses or whatever? Do you think that they had a fair argument? You know what I'm saying? Saying that, hey, this bone guy is saying he attacked Shook. He was fearing for his life. Um, if not flat out beating the case, at least getting it dropped to something lower, um, like involuntary manslaughter he pled to voluntary manslaughter like involuntary manslaughter or some kind of accidental death or something like that or criminally negligent homicide do you guys think there was room there to argue for that or or what you know what i mean but ultimately you know it seems they were really trying to pay these witnesses and paint the picture more in suge's favor and it didn't work and not only did like suge end up doing 28 years um you got this attorney here, another attorney facing a bunch of Fed charges. This attorney that we're talking about, Mark Fletcher, or I'm sorry, Matthew Fletcher. Damn, I hope I ain't been saying that the whole video. Matthew Fletcher. The Mark is the Mark Blankenship dude that was Suge's business associate that got caught up for selling the tape against the court order. You know what I mean? Um, these attorneys might both go away and probably, you know, lose their license or you know, not be a member of the bar anymore, not be able to practice law. What do you guys think about it all? Do you think it was not necessary? Let like or what? Let's discuss it all below in the comments. This has been another episode of Coffee. I thank y'all for tuning in. Don't forget to sub to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Stay tuned for more content dropping. We talk music, news, sports, current events, life, and much more. I'll catch you on the next one. And I'm gone.